And so when I hear this is me, I think about, well, the soul of who I am, the this is me part of the, the big me, the big M-E, the big I am, the I am self, the soul self, doesn't need change. Doesn't need any change. It's perfect, like just as it is. So what part needs changing? Because that's your theme, right? What needs changing? And that's the, that's the physical nature of who we are, right? That's the, the embodiment. This is the, the, the name and the form. This is the Grace Telesco that needs to be changed. And I remember being a little kid, you know, really little. I'm still little, but I, you know, it was littler then, even littler then, um, like really little. And sitting in the back of the Rambler, some of you can't even identify with what I, what I mean by that, but... <clears throat> When I tell my NSU students about, uh, you know, the Rambler, they're, they're like, I don't know what she's talking about. Anyway, the Rambler. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So I was in the back seat of the Rambler coming back from uh, a visit with the cousins and, and my aunt and uncle. And I remember, I mean, being about maybe six years old uh, and saying to my, my mother and father, was I good? Was I good? I always had it in my mind that I needed to be a better person. And it's not a surprise that my guru, Swami Jyotirmayananda, his little tagline is be good and do good. And so that's what I strive to do. And I often miss the mark. And, and you know, sin, S-I-N, is missing the mark. I often miss the mark. But I want to share with you a, a moment where I didn't miss the mark. And it was just recently, this week. I was in a car accident. Somebody hit me from behind again for the second time, um, you know, whatever. Anyway, not to make a long story out of it. But what I was surprised about, I really was surprised that I didn't react in a bad way. Even the first time when it happened last year on 95, I was on my way to school and boom, you know, we were stopped. I had my foot on the brake and I was hit from behind. And even then I was like so calm, got out of the car, you know, now, happened again and again I was calm and I was patient and I was kind and I think I came from a place of of God nature you know and I'm like when that ha when, when I'm in that place when I when that happens it's like magic for me it's like who is that I must be changing you know but now there's a, a thousand other stories that I could give you where I'm, I'm actually not doing that you know but I know it's progress not perfection and I know that it's one day at a time, day by day. I don't know where the musicians went. They're, they're awesome. They went on a break. All right. Anyway, day by day, absolutely one day at a time, right? This is about progress, not perfection. But what I notice and what I realize is that the first step for me in change is the light of awareness. To get the light of awareness on me. Now, you know, here's the thing. You know, and my, my partner is in here. She's in Massachusetts right now. I don't know if she's watching it, probably not. But in any event, uh, she's, a, she's a great, like, flashlight. She's like an interrogator. You know, like, if you're, if you're in custody and you're, you know, you're getting interrogated and you get the light, she's going to really be mad later. But, you know, the light. The light of awareness, she, she's able, you know, when, when we have intimate relationships with our family, with our friends, with the people that we live with, they're the ones who turn the light on for us. They turn the light on, and boom, you can see the, the areas for change, the places in us that need changing. When I was a cop a long time ago, in 1983, uh, back in New York, I worked in the housing projects uh, in Brooklyn. And we would come on a job, and um, we'd walk in, and it was kind of very, very, very dark. And then we would ask permission, would you mind if we turn the light on? Because, you know, we really, it's dangerous, you know, whatever. We just want to be able to, we don't even say it's dangerous. You just say, you know, we'd like to be able to see you better. And so we turn the light on, and it would be like, all the roaches on the wall would just start, like, going. Because, you know, you turn the light on, and dish, right? You say, oh better off with the light off, but not really. And that's what it's like for me and my defects and my shortcomings. Sometimes it's like, I, I wish I didn't even know they were there. The light of awareness, when the light of awareness comes on, and usually when Chris will say to me, 
you know, kind of like check yourself before you wreck yourself kind of thing. <clears throat> it's like you don't want to like know that about yourself. Rather stay in the dark about it. You know, but what I found is that it's this bottom, this spiritual bottom that we hit. It's kind of like in the darkness. When I'm in that dark place, it's that catalyst for change for me. And this has happened to me in my life. Being a cop and then a sergeant and then a lieutenant working in NYPD and during 9-11, because I was there and I was part of the response. After that was over, I went into a real dark night, like a real dark night of the soul. And it was that which was so important for me to be in that place so that I could come to an awareness. See, the darkness came before the light. And that light of awareness was like, you need to make a change. You need to make a change. And there was a lot of things that I was doing that were very self-destructive. And I was in a lot of darkness and in a lot of depression and in a lot of anxiety. But that darkness was the gift. And I look at, you know, Buddha, let's say, for example. I kind of think that Buddha might have had a dark night. You know, he looked out his window, he came out of the, you know, where he was in this kingdom and everything was all perfect and rosy and he came out and he started seeing people getting old, which was not a pretty sight. And then, you know, people, as we all know, I mean, I know, I look in the mirror and I'm like, whoa, okay. Where did that little kid go from the Rambler, you know? And then, you know, and then I feel like that little kid. So I look in, I look in the mirror and I'm like, there's a disconnect because I still feel like the little kid, but I'm getting older. So Buddha must have like looked at that and he, and he saw people aging. He saw change. He saw change. He saw impermanence. Impermanence, change. Nobody likes change except the wet baby. I always say that. I hate change. I don't like when things are changing. Do you, ever, do you ever read that book, Who Moved My Cheese? Awesome book. Got to get it. It's a very, very short bathroom reading. Easy. I don't like when people move my cheese. I don't like when things don't go my way. I don't like when somebody hits me from behind. I don't like that I have to get this thing fixed again. I don't like the idea that I have to actually let it go now because the woman didn't have insurance and she's not answering my calls. But it's okay. You know, it's okay. This change that's happening, this change, people dying, people getting old, losing jobs, moving, losing loved ones, losing homes, things changing. Sometimes things get ripped right out from under us. And that's the catalyst for the light to come in, the light of awareness, that Christ consciousness, to wake up, to wake up. There's this beautiful, beautiful song that I've been listening to over and over and over again. Um, and it's from Isaiah. <clears throat> and it's, awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Where's Zion? Where's Zion? We're the children of God, right? We're the children of God. So where's Zion? Awake, awake, put on your strength. Put on your beautiful garments. Sometimes when you leave the house, you feel like you have to put on armor. See, but you don't have to see the world that way. For me, I sometimes feel like the world is this hostile environment. You know, and then I have to feel like I have to be armed to go out, especially now in the car. I'm like, forget about it. Don't get it fixed because somebody's going to come and hit you anyway. Again, wait for the next person who has insurance. No. Just kidding. Awake, awake. Wake up. Turn the light on. Stand up. Put one foot in front of the other day by day, one day at a time. Knowing that there's progress happening. Knowing that I am changing. Knowing that I am being good and doing good. It says, shake off the dust and arise. Loose yourself from the chains around your neck. What is that? That's that illusion, that cosmic illusion that this is real. This isn't real. We're a virtual reality ride happening right now. You know, in the Hindu tradition, we believe that, right? Uh, the, the Buddha said, life is suffering. The only way to not suffer is to detach from that which isn't real. 
It's that Vivek in Hinduism we talk about, Vivek, discrimination, discriminating between the real and the unreal. Now, all of that is very abstract. And it's like, keep it simple. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Talking about that when I go to the place of, I am not this bumper. I'm not this bumper. When you go outside, you'll see the rogue. I have a rogue, and you'll see the little white, you know, I can like pinpoint the, the thing that's got to change that I don't like. It's like an OCD thing a little bit. Um, it's an OCD thing because I'm attached. I'm attached to that which is ever-changing. So when I keep it simple and I go to the place of, okay, who am I really? This is me. Who is me? Who am I? Who am I really? essence of who I am, the soul, the spirit, I'm made up of the same ingredients as God. Like literally, light and love and joy. I'm not this bumper, nor am I my defects and my shortcomings. Let me tell you what they are. I'm impatient. I have to control everything. I'm a nervous wreck. I may not look like it right now, but some people who know me know that if I'm touching myself a lot, it's because I'm very anxious. I'm anxious. I want to change those things about myself. But here's the thing, and it's really, it's really simple for me. I know that I am not this body. I am not this mind. I am not this limited personality. That I am the self, the blessed self. This is me. This is who I really am. I have to awaken to that, that who I really am is God, this Christ consciousness. But I forget, and I go back to sleep, and I got a lot of dust all over me, probably from all the accidents that keep happening. <laughs> but here's the other thing. I do want to change. I do want to be better. I want to be a better person, so I keep on saying that. I keep on saying, I want to be better, I want to be better. Part of that Isaiah... Um, Scripture says, rise up, stand up, awaken, put on your beautiful garments. Sometimes it's hard. I don't know if you ever feel really depressed. You don't even want to take a shower. I heard somebody say, brushing my teeth is like the best I can do. I have to get up. I have to stand up. I have to turn the light on. What's the light? The light is the remembering. The light is awakening, remembering. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, this, uh, our beautiful ascended master and teacher, teaches us in the Garden of Gethsemane, there he is, dark night of the soul, major darkness, feels abandoned. At least that's what he's telling us. I know at the deep essence of his remembering and knowing, he knew who he was. But before the Garden of Gethsemane and the road to Calvary and the crucifixion, like before all of that, he had all of these, all of the support. And he was a great teacher. But then fast forward the tape, and you're looking at the crucifixion, and you're like, oh, what happened? And then everybody runs. Everybody leaves him. But wait, there's more. The resurrection. The resurrection, the light. The light comes back. So we need the light of awareness in order to change. And I'm going to close with this. I have to put on my garments. I have to wake up and do my sadhana, which is a spiritual discipline. In Sanskrit, we, you know, I, my Sanskrit's a little rusty, but <laughs> sadhana means spiritual discipline, prayer, meditation, reading of scriptures, praying the names of God, doing service. All of these things are my spiritual discipline. So with God's grace and God's mercy, I know that these defects that I'd like to work on, these things about myself that I'd like to change, can happen with God's grace. So here's the thing. I walk into an elevator. I know where I want to go. You know, I know I want to be a better person, right? I want to go.
go into this elevator. I walk into the elevator. I have to step in for the elevator. I have to press the button. I have to know where I'm going. Where am I going? I want to be better. I want to remember who is the true this is me, this God-like being. So I walk into the elevator, and I press the button, and I know where I'm going. And then I have to trust and surrender to God's grace, which is this elevator. Did you ever think about that? You walk into this elevator, and you're like, how does it lift you? How does, it, how does that happen? And then you get to where you're going. My point is this. I can't get rid of all the defects, all the shortcomings, all of, the, all of these things about me that I'd like to change without God's help. I can't do it. It's not willpower. Because I fail all the time. It's higher power. And when I can be in that place of surrender and humility, that it's God's grace and mercy that awaken me to change, then the light comes on and magic happens.